Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Boulafet. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Trafa Palace the Council of Representatives Speaker Fawzia Zainal and the Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh, where His Royal Highness discussed with them a number of topics of interest. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that the cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities is a basic pillar to enhance national efforts to face the repercussions of the spread of the coronavirus, adding that the Kingdom has taken proactive steps to alleviate the repercussions of this crisis and protect the health of citizens. His Royal Highness expressed his support to the legislative authority to perform its duties and his keenness to strengthen cooperation between the two authorities to serve the country and enhance its safety, stability and development to meet the aspirations of citizens. He hailed the support of legislative authority members to government efforts in all fields, especially during this period which requires the solidarity of state institutions and all to contain and mitigate the effects of the corona pandemic and its repercussions on citizens in various economic sectors. The Prime Minister added that the corona pandemic has made a tremendous impact on the world in various fields, noting that it must be ready for the next phase which requires further cooperation and revision of some laws and legislations to suit current developments. His Royal Highness also affirmed that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's support has contributed to enhancing government decisions to provide the necessary support to alleviate the repercussions of the virus on citizens and to various economic sectors. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to the Legislative Authority members for their inquiry about His Royal Highness's health during his treatment abroad. His Royal Highness hailed the awareness of the people of Bahrain and its contributions to supporting the government's efforts to combat the coronavirus, expressing thanks and appreciation to journalists and media personnel for their their national role in raising awareness on the topic. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister commended the efforts of medical and nursing caterers in the Kingdom to address the Corona crisis. His Royal Highness reiterated the affirmation that Bahrain exerts its utmost efforts to protect its citizens inside and outside the Kingdom and takes measures that ensure their safety during the current circumstances. He asserted that expatriate workers in the Kingdom receive proper care, noting that business owners assume a joint responsibility in providing them with healthy housing and environment. For their part, the heads of the Shura and Representatives Council congratulated His Royal Highness the Prime Minister on his return to the Kingdom in good health, praising His Royal Highness's latest directives that contributed to containing the coronavirus. Bahrain's Ministry of Education has implemented a successful e-learning strategy to continue providing education via distant learning in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. More in this report with Khalid Hijras. Under Secretary for Resources and Services at the Ministry of Education, Dr. Mohammed Mubarak Jum'a talks about the ministry's successful experience in facilitating highly effective distant learning. In Bahrain, we did it in a different way. We have a very competent team. So we thought of Google Classroom as a platform. And at the same time, a Microsoft Teams as an application, which is also an international platform used by millions. And we found it easier for us to go for a Microsoft Teams. And they provided accounts for our students for free. We brought all the sectors together in the Ministry of Education, the IT, the curriculum, education. In one room, we created the kind of an operation room and every sector had to do its responsibility. And we put the students in, in, in Bahrain in centralized classrooms. Right from the first session we started, we had more than 60,000 students participating. And we kept track of the numbers on a daily basis. So for example, in my mobile, I have the Teams application and I can actually track the numbers of the students who you know, enter to the classroom and who actually interact with the teachers. A lot of students, felt just exactly as if they were in the classroom. Officials from the Ministry of Education were keen to continue providing quality education to the students of Bahrain. The virtual classrooms have been created uh, by the IT team members in the Ministry in collaboration with Microsoft. A form has been uploaded for the students to answer uh, to assess their understanding of the uh, lesson's content. These forms show instant results to students and their teachers 
and enables the teachers to identify the level of understanding of each student. The success of these sessions have been due to the commitment of the students as well as the dedication of all the teachers and the IT members in the control room. Uh, we in the Ministry of Education, we started a national project uh, called King Hamas Schools of the Future a long time back and this uh, helped the Ministry of Education to continue now with the necessity of having a remote learning. Uh, you can see that we are here in the uh, control room. We are running now the virtual, uh, centralized virtual classrooms. And uh, to do this, we worked with Microsoft and we provided all our students with accounts with the Microsoft 365. And in this one, students can use lots of applications, Word, uh, PowerPoint, online, easily with any device, even their smartphones. We started with training the, the teachers uh, to be as presenters. The students now have a timetable, a fixed timetable, uh, provided by the MOE to enter their classes virtually and remotely. Microsoft Teams have a Q&A feature. This feature uh, allows some interactivity between the students and the teacher. So whenever the student have a question, the, the teacher will be able to see this question and will be able to answer the question. Here in the operations room, we have a quality insurance system. We support the teachers and the students. Reporting for Bahrain International, Khalid Hijris. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain affirms the Kingdom's constant and supportive stance to Egypt in all its actions against terrorism and to address all those who try to undermine its security and stability and its solidarity with Egypt in its strategic role in enhancing Arab national security and maintaining security and peace in the region. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs commends the great efforts made by the Egyptian security forces with high efficiency in combating violence, extremism and terrorism and its elimination of the terrorist cell in a neighborhood in Cairo which was planning to carry out terrorist acts during the Copt celebration of Easter. It expressed its sincere condolences and sympathy to the leadership, the governments and people of Egypt and the families of the victims of the Egyptian security martyrs and its wishes for a speedy recovery for all the injured in addition to renewing the position of Bahrain that rejects violence, extremism and terrorism in all its forms. The Minister the ministry also stressed the necessity of concerted international efforts to deter terrorist groups and all those who support and finance them. Saudi Arabia reports six new coronavirus deaths and 493 new infections, raising the virus-related death toll in the kingdom to 79 and the total number of confirmed cases to 5,862. The Ministry of Health announced today that the six new deaths are all of people who had chronic illnesses before they were infected with the virus. They included two Saudi Arabian men in Medina who were between the ages of 70 and 72, a 67-year-old Saudi Arabian women in Mecca and three residents who were between the ages of 35 and 57. Out of the 493 new cases, 109 were reported in Medina, 86 in Hufuf, 84 in Dammam, 69 in Jeddah, 56 in Riyadh and 40 in Mecca. Arab coalition air defense intercepted a ballistic missile launched by the Houthi militia in the city of Marib, east of Sana'a, at a time when the militias continued their violations of the ceasefire in Yemen. The attack was the third in Marib since the Arab coalition declared a unilateral ceasefire. The terrorist Houthi militia has stepped up its breaches in Hodeida and most of the fighting fronts in a systematic exploitation of the ceasefire. According to Interior Ministry officials, Egypt security forces killed seven militants during a tense raid in the El Amriya neighborhood in Cairo, adding that the extremists were planning attacks on Coptic churches ahead of Easter next week. Several militants clashed with Egyptian forces yesterday from their hideout apartment in El Amriya neighborhood during a tense standoff which lasted at least four hours. Security forces were able to find ten weapons and huge quantities of ammunition after concluding their raid on the militants. According to authorities, an Egyptian policeman died during the clashes while three other police officers were injured. And now for the latest business news, we move to Bara. Thank you, Sara.
Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdullah and starting with the local starts. As Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,308.39 points, marking an increase of 0.81 points above the previous closing. This increase was due to the rise in the commercial bank sector and services sector results indicated that 58 equity transactions took place with a volume of 2,851,300 129 worth 633,733 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector, representing 72.25% of the total value of securities traded. Analysts said today the coronavirus pandemic is thrusting the Middle East into a multi-layered crisis, which the region's economies have to be protected from. The Middle East, already wrecked by high numbers of unemployed youth, unrest, conflict and large numbers of refugees, will sink into a recession this year, sparked by the double shock of the coronavirus outbreak and low oil prices, the International Monetary Fund said today. The impact of the disease known as COVID-19 threatens to leave its wake significant economic turmoil across the region, the international lender says. Technology companies led stocks higher on Wall Street as investors focus on how and when authorities may begin to ease business shutdowns and limits on people's movements imposed to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Big companies also started reporting their first quarter earnings, giving investors an early peek into how the outbreak was affecting them. Traders will be pouring over companies' quarterly report cards over the next few weeks to learn how the outbreak has affected corporate America's prospects for profit growth this year. The S&P 500 index climbed 3.1 percent, easing its losses for a day earlier. The measures the UK government introduced in an effort to maintain the health of the economy amid the new coronavirus pandemic was the right plan, the country's finance minister insisted yesterday. The comments by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, came after the Office for the Budget Responsibility, OPR, said the economy could shrink by a third between April and June if the country's lockdown imposed March 23rd lasts for three months. The Office for Budget Responsibility said 3.4 million people, or 10 percent of the workforce, could become unemployed, while public sector not borrowing could reach 4 percent of the GDP, the biggest deficit since World War II. Sunak admitted that every business and every household can't be protected, but highlighted he expects the economic impact to be temporary with a bounce back in growth. And that's all for the business news for this evening, and it's back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Bara. Temperatures are rising across Europe, and with them comes the appearance of beautiful spring flowers. One forest near Brussels attracts tourists every year to see its stunning array of bluebells. The Hellerbos forest is located south of Brussels, and the floral floor eventually grows and stretches in white patches. Usually each spring, the forest is visited by tourists who come to walk and hike here and enjoy this spontaneous flower show. However, with the coronavirus lockdown forcing people home and preventing them from leaving their cities, Hellerbos remains off limits to anyone who's not a local resident. The Bluebells carpet with it will cover the forest for about two weeks before leaving the floor to other shows of nature.